He had his gun on his hip, as he always does. This neighbor says it was to keep others safe. We had had several car break-ins. I was openly carrying, as I'm a licensed to carry. But did he take his crime watch too far? Her niece said you approached the car with your hand on a gun. She was on her porch screaming at me about chasing her kids, and I pointed a gun at them. Judge Judy. Ms. Reed, you and Mr. Gorman live in the same gated community. How long have you lived there? I've lived there for four years, ma'am. And Mr. Gorman, how long have you lived there? Three years, sir. Ma'am. And when, Mr. Gorman, did you become part of the Homeowners Association? I became a board member in 2016. Are you still a board member? No, ma'am. Were you asked to leave? I was voted out, ma'am. Okay. Each of you claim an ongoing course of conduct that is harassing with regard to a shed that you put up on your property that became a bone of contention between the two of you. When did you put up this shed? It wasn't until about August time frame, but everything was precipitated by when I had to call the police on him because he chased my niece through our cul-de-sac and he had a gun and she called me. I do have the police statement. Just a second. When did that happen? That happened in May of 2016, and... Okay. Just one second. Mr. Gorman, were you a board member of the Homeowners Association then? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember the incident with regard to Miss Reed's niece? In detail, yes. And I don't know if it was her niece or not. Well, she says it was her yeah, niece. Yeah, right. I... It was somebody from her house. Again, didn't know that at the time. Okay, ma'am. whatever it was, whether you knew it or not, it was somebody that she knew that was clearly an invited guest of hers. Correct. I'd like you to tell me what happened. So, the day before this, there was an incident where we had several bees in one of the tree trunks in our association in their cul-de-sac area. Several of the neighbors in that area were complaining that these bees were problematic because I didn't want to kill the bees. I was waiting for beekeepers to come out and look at them, see if we could rehome them without damaging the tree. And so I was putting caution tape up at night. While I was putting the caution tape up, we had also had several car break-ins. I was openly carrying, as I'm a licensed to carry. I had put up some of the caution tape. Car went through the cul-de-sac extremely slow, parked in front of an area that has no houses in front of it across from hers and sat there. I saw some movement inside there, didn't think anything of it, walked home, figuring, okay, this is a little odd that they I don't fi I don't care what you were figuring. What time of the evening was that? It was around 11 o'clock in the evening, ma'am. Okay, so then you went home. Correct. I Next. then got in my vehicle, figuring again, I don't care what you figure. I you went that. home, you got into your car. Got in my vehicle. You got your car, you went back to the cul-de-sac. Turned into the street went, noticed the car was still there, drove around the cul-de-sac. As I was starting to come down towards where the cul-de-sac turns, the car turned its engine on, immediately sped off, made a right at the stop sign, went down towards our pond area. And? I continued to follow. As I followed them, I tried to angle my vehicle towards the center of the line, kind of like if you were going to talk to somebody on the opposite side of the street. Rolled down my window. About this time, they blew past me. I went through, picked up the phone, called Bear County, non-emergency, to let them know that we had a suspicious vehicle in the neighborhood. It's a gated community, and I was gonna ask that they be aware, and then ask this individual to not come back if they didn't live there or anything. As I was calling them, they turned down back to the same street. So as soon as they turned, they stopped in front of her house, and several people got out of the vehicle. At that point, her husband was out there, and she was on her porch screaming at me about chasing her kids, and I pointed a gun at them, on and on and on. Well, let's stop for a moment. Did the police arrive? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see the report. Yes, ma'am. And I'm the one that called the police. I called 911. When did you call 911? So my niece was coming home from boot camp and she was coming to surprise her mom who was at my house. So when he started up the sidewalk on foot, he had his gun on his hip as he always does, and he made sure that she saw it. No, 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 now listen to me. Yes, ma'am. He had his gun on his hip. Yes, ma'am. As he was doing what? Approaching the vehicle. You mean when it was first spotted in your cul-de-sac? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so your niece called you? Yes, ma'am. And you called the police? Yes, ma'am. And reported that someone with a gun had approached your niece in a car? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I had never seen him before, and that's why she drove off. Well, it's clear she called the police. Correct. I called Fair County Non-Emergency. Just which a second. She called time. the police, not Correct. you. Okay. Well, she I called mean, the police. To that report, and I she called through Non-Emergency, which is a listen to situation. me, Mr. Gorman. Yes, ma'am. She called the police on you. She made the first report to the police. She called at me a time. She made the report about you mm -hmm. when you first saw her niece in the car and her niece said you approached the car, that's what the police report says, with your hand on a gun. 